On January 13, 1999, 18-year-old high school student Heimin Lee was seen leaving Woodlawn High School in her 1998 Nissan Sentra at 2.15 p.m. She was on her way to pick up her younger cousin from daycare before heading to her after-school job at a LensCrafters optical shop. She was supposed to arrive at 3.15 p.m., but she never showed. This was highly unusual for someone as responsible and conscientious as Hei Min Lee, alerting her family that something was wrong. Hei's family quickly called the police, who responded by conducting a search and talking to her various friends. They reached out to her ex-boyfriend Adnan Syed around 6.30 p.m. He said that the last time he had seen her was in school when classes ended. The police were also able to get in touch with her current boyfriend, Don, who was her co-worker at LensCrafters. Many assumed that she had met him, but he didn't know where she was either. No one did. Four weeks later on February 9th, a man working at a local community college stops by Leakin Park to relieve himself. He walked a bit further from the road to find a good spot and ended up finding Hay's body, which was partially buried in a shallow grave. The area was known as a place where bodies are buried. The autopsy results showed that Hay died from manual strangulation. The police investigated the man who found her, Alonzo Sellers. They also checked out Don, the new boyfriend. They didn't find anything. Then they received an anonymous tip asking them to investigate Adnan Syed. After the police got the tip about Adnan, they pulled his cell phone records and began to look at the people he talked to that day. One of the names that came up was Jennifer Pusateri. When the police talked to her initially, Jennifer didn't have much to say. However, she shows up at the station the day after with her lawyer. During Jennifer's interview, she stated that Adnan was with Jay on that fateful day. More importantly, she revealed that Adnan had killed Hay, according to Jay. Jay was then invited to the police for an interview. He admits that he was with Adnan on January 13th. He helped Adnan bury the body, and to prove his testimony, he led the police to where Hay's car was parked. At this point, the police had yet to discover her car. Around six weeks after she went missing, the police arrested him. The evidence disclosed at the trial included a testimony from his friend Jay Wilds, who claimed to have assisted Adnan in burying Hay, as well as cell tower records that show that he was near Leakin Park that night. A year later, Adnan was convicted of murder, robbery, kidnapping, and false imprisonment. He was sentenced to life in prison, plus 30 years. In 2014, a podcast called Serial started by Sarah Koenig, which questioned Syed's guilt. In a span of 12 episodes, Serial presented the public with a case of wrongful conviction. Syed was innocent. According to Koenig and her team, there was no evidence to support his guilt. The podcast became very popular. In fact, the case became internationally famous. The show also allowed others to start digging more into the case, unearthing information that gave birth to theories on who really killed Hei Min Lee. Let's put aside Adnan as the murderer for now and look at the different theories that sprouted after Serial came out. If Adnan isn't guilty, then who killed Hei Min Lee? Some propose that it was Jay who killed Hei and placed the blame on Adnan. He gave details about the murder and the disposal of the body. While he testified as an accessory after the fact, he could have been the murderer. Moreover, he kept changing his testimony, which led people to doubt him. As for motive, some have suggested it was because Hay threatened to report him to the police that he was dealing drugs. Others said that it might have been because Hay caught him cheating on his girlfriend, Stephanie. In any case, Jay needed to shut Hay up, so he killed her. Unfortunately for the proponents of this theory, there is no evidence to prove that Jay is the guilty party. If Hay had actually caught him cheating, wouldn't she tell Adnan about it first? He was, after all, Stephanie's best friend. But she doesn't do that. There's not even any mention of it in her diary. 
More importantly, he wasn't close with Jay. It's unlikely that she would meet him alone somewhere where he could kill her. Another theory that popped up is that it was Jay and his friend Jennifer Pusateri who murdered Heimin Lee and then pinned the blame on Adnan. According to police records, the officers talked to Jen first before Jay and Adnan. This wasn't surprising as her number was actually one of the numbers Adnan called on his cell. In fact, there were four calls made to Jen's home from noon to 4 p.m. from Adnan's phone. According to her testimony, Jay told her that Adnan killed Hay, but some believe that she was lying to cover up for Jay. In this scenario, it was suggested that Jay was having an affair with Jen and Hay caught them together. They killed Hay to prevent her from telling Stephanie. However, both teenagers weren't close to Hay at all. How could they have lured Hay to a place where they could kill her unnoticed? Like the Jay is the killer theory, there wasn't any evidence to support this one. While some suspected Jay, others felt that Don, Hay's current boyfriend at that time, was a strong suspect in her murder. At the time Lee went missing, it was determined that Don had an alibi. He was at a lens crafter store in Hunt Valley from 9am to 6pm that day. The general manager confirmed his alibi. He even had a timesheet to prove it. However, it turned out that the timesheet he used had a different employee number. Plus, the manager of the store where he was at the time was his mother's girlfriend. Moreover, the police were unable to reach him until 1.30 a.m. on the night Lee went missing. He claimed that he was home around 7 p.m. So why didn't he call the police back? Despite these red flags, the police didn't seem to be interested in Don as a suspect. Moreover, there isn't any physical evidence linking him to the murder. As for motive, some people think that he may have thought that Hay still had feelings for Syed and became overly jealous. But Lee's last diary entry where she professes her love for Don doesn't support that fact. She even included her love for Don in her AOL profile for everyone, including Adnan, to see. Some people suspect that it was Mr. S, the man who found Hay's body, who was the murderer. According to his statement, he discovered Hay's body on his way to get a tool from his house. He stopped by the side of the road to pee, and the spot he chose, 143 feet from the road, just happened to be near her. It doesn't sound suspicious until you learn that Mr. S has a criminal record. Then again, his record, which includes compulsive streaking, does not indicate that he would be capable of murdering a random teenage girl. He was given two polygraph tests. He failed the first one and then aced the second one. Experts state that this doesn't exactly scream guilt. He could have just been naturally nervous. Furthermore, it doesn't make sense for the murderer to lead the police to the body of his victim. More importantly, he doesn't really have a motive for doing so. One Reddit user found another alternative suspect, Roy S. Davis III. Just a few months before Lee's body was found, the body of 18-year-old Jada Lambert was discovered in a wooded park. She was also a student at Woodlawn High School. DNA tests conducted in 2002 proved that her killer was Roy Davis. There were several similarities between the two cases which led people to speculate that Roy might have also murdered Hay. Jada was also last seen driving her car. She was also strangled and left in a wooded area. It is possible that both girls drove past Liberty Road where Roy used to live. In fact, Roy's house was quite close to the Campfield Early Learning Center where Hay's cousin was waiting to be picked up. However, Hay wasn't raped. She was also fully clothed. Aside from a few similarities, there's no evidence that even links Roy to the crime. A convicted serial burglar, Ronald Lee Moore, is also a candidate for Hay's murder. He was released from prison just 10 days before Hay disappeared. In 2013, he was suspected of killing Annalise Hyang Suk Lee, who was found murdered in her apartment in Maryland in 1999 the same year that Hay was murdered. 
It was the podcast Serial that first suggested Moore as a plausible suspect. However, Moore was investigated by the police and his DNA was checked against the DNA found at the crime scene. It didn't match. In 2020, Moore was identified as the murderer of Sean Marie Neal, who was found strangled in her condo in North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, in 1996. It was DNA that linked him to the murder. Unfortunately, Moore committed in jail in 2008. More importantly, there is still nothing that connects him to Heimin Lee. Even with so many theories around, there's only one party that stands out. Adnan Syed. He had the motive, means, and opportunity. Let's look at the motive. To understand the motive, we need to give a brief background on Hei and Adnan. Who was Heimin Lee? Heimin Lee was born in Korea. She emigrated to the US with her mother and younger brother when she was 11. She was a senior at Woodlawn High School in Baltimore County, Maryland. She played field hockey and lacrosse. He was also the manager for the boys' wrestling team. Lee was on the honor roll and participated in the Ecology Club, French Club, and Students Against Destructive Decisions. He was a mature, independent girl a model student, and a star athlete. Her future was extremely bright. Who was Adnan Syed? Like Lee, Syed was also a senior at Woodlawn High School in Baltimore County, Maryland. He was born in the US to Pakistani parents, conservative Muslims that prohibited him from dating, drinking, and smoking. That didn't prevent him from dating Lee, smoking pot, and drinking alcohol, though. He was, at a glance, your typical American teenager. Adnan was well-liked by his peers. He played football and was part of the track team. He was an EMT. He was prom king. Many supporters of Adnan state that he's incapable of killing Hay simply because of these facts. But they don't actually prove that he isn't capable of murder. Anyone can kill as long as they have enough motivation to do so. The motive. So why did Adnan kill Hay? Is it really because he couldn't bear for her to be with someone else? A lot of teenagers go through breakups, but they don't end up killing their ex. Of course, there are a few that do cross that line. Maybe Adnan was one of them. Adnan and Hay's relationship lasted for around eight months, starting around April 1998 and ending in December of the same year. According to Hay's diary entries, she loved Adnan a lot and he was incredibly sweet to her. He even went to her class to gift her a single rose. But Adnan felt that Hay didn't love him enough. According to their friend Becky, Hay didn't always want to have Adnan around. She also didn't like that Adnan kept telling her what to do. Hay was independent, so she found him controlling and possessive. Aside from their contradicting personalities, there was also the matter of religion. Adnan told Hay that falling in love with her was a great sin according to his Muslim beliefs, and this was further emphasized on the night of the homecoming dance which was held on October 31st. Adnan's parents created a scene at the dance when they heard that Adnan was dating a girl. The two officially broke up the next day. Hay sent Adnan a breakup note the day after, confirming her decision. This is the same note where the phrase, I'm going to kill, was later found. The two eventually got back together mid-November. Hay professed in her diary that she still loved Adnan and that she was happy. Adnan would even stop by the store to visit Hay. However, by early December, Hay started having feelings for her co-worker, Don. She writes about being torn between the two men and that Adnan was aware of her emotional state. According to their friend Debbie, Adnan thought that Hay was cheating on him, and he kept asking her about the other guy. Debbie described Adnan as paranoid and very possessive. This is not the first time that Adnan acts this way. Hay also mentions Adnan's possessiveness early on in their relationship in their diary. Their mutual friend Aisha also recalls how Adnan would constantly page Hay and suddenly drop by their girls' only outings. The couple break up by mid-December. 
Hay gives Adnan the second and final breakup note. According to Zhao Wan, Adnan's friend, it was because Hay liked someone else. According to Adnan's friend, Stephanie, Adnan wasn't expecting Hay to break up with him over another guy. According to Hay's diary, Adnan had a difficult time accepting their breakup. It was natural for Adnan to feel shocked. She said she loved him. How could her feelings change so fast? It wasn't an unreasonable question. It wasn't wrong for Adnan to get mad or get depressed. He didn't handle it all that well. Most teenagers wouldn't. Even so, Adnan and Hay are still on good terms after they broke up in mid-December. They gave each other Christmas presents. Adnan was a person Hay called when she got in a minor car accident. When Adnan had problems with his car, Hay gave him a ride. So for Adnan, it might have seemed that they would be getting back together, just like last time. Her confusion about her feelings wasn't going to last. But then, Hay goes on her first date with Don on January 1st. Adnan, on the other hand, seems to be flirting around with Nisha, a girl he met at a New Year's party. He doesn't learn about Hay dating Don until around January 5th. Around this time, Jay states that Adnan talked about killing Hay because she was sleeping with someone else. In his opinion, Adnan wasn't someone who was used to losing. It was hard for him to accept that Hay has already moved on. This was just a week prior to Hay's murder. Jay naturally didn't take what he said seriously. Who would? It is, after all, difficult to accept that your girl breaks up with you and is now with someone else. It's only natural for him to vent a little. Adnan's anger possibly escalated even further when Hay updated her AOL Instant Messenger account, clearly stating that Don was the new love of her life. This was on January 9th, just four days before she died. It is unknown when Adnan wrote, I'm going to kill on the first breakup note, but we can see that he couldn't accept that she had a new man in her life, one that she's publicly declaring as the love of her life. Moreover, this was someone whom he made so many sacrifices for. He went against his beliefs and his family to be with her, and then she just humiliates him like this. Maybe he said and wrote those things in anger. But at some point, those thoughts turned into a fantasy that he wanted to turn into a reality. The only thing that would stop him would be if she chose to go back to him. Now, let's talk about means and opportunity. Based on witness accounts, cell phone records, and trial records, we piece together what most likely happened on that fateful day. The day before the murder, January 12th, we learned that Adnan got a brand new cell phone under the name of his friend in the mosque, Bilal. He talked to several people after he got his phone, supposedly to give them his number. He also repeatedly called Hay that night. He called her home phone using his new cell phone starting at 11.27 p.m. According to Adnan, Hay was the one who called, but that's unlikely because he just got his phone. How would she know his number? In fact, it was only after their call that Hay writes down his cell phone number in her diary. In addition, she was talking on the phone with Don at the time of his first few calls. Adnan also stated that Hay was groveling on the phone that night, wanting to get back with him. This seems very unlikely, since she had just finished spending time with Don that evening and then talking to him on the phone. She also writes about how much she loves Don in her diary that night. The very last entry she made before she disappeared. The next day, January 13th, Adnan arrives at school on time, 7.40 a.m., which is noted as unusual by his classmate Krista. Both of them are on their way to photography class when they bump into Hay. Krista hears Adnan ask for a ride because his car was in the shop or with his brother who worked at a tire store. Hay agrees. At 10.45 a.m., Adnan calls Jay at home. According to his testimony, he wanted to remind Jay that it was Stephanie's birthday and he needed to get her a gift. He leaves around 10.46 a.m., to pick up Jay at his house. At this point, we know that Adnan does have a ride. His car is with him, and he uses it to pick up Jay. 
During lunch, Becky learns that Hay will be giving a ride to Adnan after school. She doesn't see Adnan because he's not in school. Jay and Adnan are together during lunch break. Jay mentions that he needed to buy a gift for his girlfriend Stephanie at the mall. Adnan stated that he had something to do. He asked to be dropped off, giving his car and cell phone to Jay. Adnan stated that he'll use someone else's phone to call Jay once he is done with track practice. Jay drops him off at school around 1.15 p.m. so he can attend psychology class, which he is already late for. Despite already being late for 20 minutes, he still stops by the guidance counselor's office to pick up a recommendation letter for University of Maryland College Park. Betty Stuckey testifies to this. According to Adnan, this was the reason why he was 35 minutes late to class. Some speculate that the reason why Adnan was late was to make sure he could get a ride from Hay. At 2.15 p.m., class ends. According to Becky, she heard Hay tell Adnan that she can't give him a ride because she had something else to do. However, in her original police interview, Becky never says that. It's only after repeated interviews with the defense team that she changes her testimony. So, we can assume that the ride did take place, even if they weren't seen. After all, based on Adnan's initial interviews, he and Hay would often use that bit of time between school ending and the pick-up time of her cousin at daycare to do things together. It only takes 10 minutes to get to the daycare from the school. So, Hay definitely had time to give him a ride that day. She's done so before, even after the breakup. As for why Adnan needed to hitch a ride with Hay, it was possible that he wanted to see her alone and this would give him enough time to talk to her about getting back together. He even brought a rose which was found in the back seat. Its floral wrapper had Adnan's fingerprints on it. The rose and baby's breath wrapped in floral paper is quite in line with Adnan's personality. According to Hay's diary entries and their friends, Adnan did some pretty romantic things for Hay. He gave her a single rose during Hay's physics class during their relationship and Hay was over the moon about it. So, around this time, Jay had already gone to the mall, bought the gift, and ended up at Jennifer's house. There he waited for Adnan's call, and Adnan did call, asking Jay to pick him up at the Best Buy. According to his phone records, an incoming call came at 2.36pm that lasted five seconds. One thing to note at this point is that Adnan didn't really need to lend his phone to Jay. First, this was a brand new phone. It's hard to believe that a teenager would voluntarily give his new phone to someone he declared that he wasn't close to just one day before he got it. He could have just told Jay that practice will end at 5pm, so pick me up then. Or he could have just lent Jay his car and told him to bring it back to him right after. He'll be at the library or the gym before heading to practice which started at 4pm. Any of these scenarios could have worked. If he hadn't planned to do something else that required Jay to have the car and the phone that afternoon. A plan that needed a bit of flexibility regarding the meeting time and place. Why else would you need to tell someone when and where to pick you up? Now, according to a classmate of Adnan, Asia McLean, she saw Adnan at the library at around 2.30 p.m. The library was located just across the school. The two started talking, despite not being close friends, and their conversation is all about the breakup and how Adnan was happy. At 2.45 p.m., Asia leaves the library with her boyfriend. In her statement, she says that Adnan was still at the library when she left. She remembers that day clearly because she got snowed in at her boyfriend's house. If it weren't for the snow, she would have forgotten what happened that day. However, the weather report for that day did not report any snow. In fact, there was a retraction on Serial's website, but there wasn't any retraction on any of the episodes. So we can assume that Adnan wasn't anywhere at school. No one can verify his whereabouts from 2.15 to 4 p.m., where he has a conversation with Coach Sai at track practice. At 2.36pm, Hay hasn't been declared missing. 
but it's safe to say that she's somewhere with Adnan. Jay leaves Jennifer's house at around 2.45 p.m., heading to Best Buy like Adnan told him. Adnan is somewhere nearby, which we assume to be the murder location. Around 3.15 p.m., there's an incoming call that lasts 20 seconds, possibly Adnan confirming that Jay is on his way. It's during this period of time, between 2.36 p.m. to 3.15 p.m., that we assume Adnan strangles Hay, after which he gets help from Jay in stashing her body and her car somewhere before Adnan establishes his alibi. So, Hay is due to arrive at the daycare at 3.15 p.m., but she hasn't shown up yet. This is already troubling because Hay is reliable. She always picks up her cousin on time. At 3.21 p.m., Jay calls Jen's house. The cell phone records show that he made the call near the tower that covers the Best Buy location. There's a lot of speculation about this call, but it is most likely Jay calling Jen to ask if Adnan has called because he can't find him. At 3.30 p.m., the daycare teacher calls Hay's home to let them know that Hay hasn't shown up. At 3.32 p.m., Adnan calls Nisha and talks to her for over two minutes. According to Nisha's statement, Adnan puts Jay on the phone. She remembers talking to him. Jay also tells this to the police during his second interview. At this point, we can safely say that Adnan and Jay are together at 3.30ish that afternoon. Jay wouldn't have a reason to call Nisha on his own. They didn't know each other. Why would they talk to each other for more than two minutes? This directly contradicts Adnan's alibi of staying in school, waiting for track practice to start. Moreover, the call pings the same tower that covers the area where Best Buy is located. As for the reason why Adnan called Nisha, it's possible that this was supposed to be their alibi. They were both talking to Nisha at the time of the murder. The only problem is, Jay didn't stick with the story as planned. By 3.35 p.m., Hay's brother starts calling around to look for Hay. He calls lens crafters, but Hay's shift doesn't start until 6 p.m. Aisha reaches out to other friends, including Krista, once she learns that Hay is missing. At 3.48 p.m., records show a call made to someone named Phil. It's assumed that it's Jay because only Jay knows him. This further proves that Adnan and Jay are together before track practice starts. Adnan's phone pings the tower near the school, which gives us a rough estimate of where the two are at this point. Another call is made at 3.59 p.m. A guy named Patrick who sold marijuana. The same tower is pinged. Around 4 p.m., Adnan gets dropped off at track practice, and this is when Adnan sets up his alibi. He engages Coach Sai in a conversation. It was long enough and unusual enough that the coach remembers it. At 4.58, there's an incoming call that lasts 19 seconds. Presumably, this is the pick-me-up call from Adnan. By 5.12 p.m., Hay's brother calls the police. Jay picks up Adnan from practice at 5.30 p.m. Krista, the classmate who knows about Hay giving Adnan a ride, listens to her voicemail from Aisha, who is telling her that Hay is missing. She calls Aisha back and asks if anyone had called Adnan because he was supposed to be with Hay after school. At 5.38 p.m., Adnan makes a two-second call to Krista. Whether this is deliberate or an accident, the call pings the tower that covers the I-70 park and ride. The same location where they left Hay's body in her Nissan, according to Jay's testimony. By 6 p.m., the police calls lens crafters to ask if Hay showed up for her shift. She didn't. Hay's brother calls the number written in her diary, thinking it was Don's number since his name is written all over one of the pages in her diary. He talks to Adnan at 6.07 p.m. He says he's at Christie's, but hasn't seen Hay. The police call Aisha and learn that Hay was supposed to give Adnan a ride. Aisha calls Adnan at 6.09 p.m. to let him know that the police will be calling him. At 6.24 p.m., the police reach out to Adnan to ask about the ride. 
Adnan confirms that he was supposed to get a ride from Hay, but she left without him because she got tired of waiting. He also asks the police if they have checked with Hay's boyfriend. The funny thing is that Adnan never tries to contact Hay to explain why he was late in meeting her or ask for an explanation as to why she left without him when she promised him a ride. There's absolutely no communication between him and Hay from the time class ends to the time the officer asks him about the ride. Also, Adnan actually changes that part of his story later on, stating that he had never asked for a ride to begin with. At 6.30 p.m., Jay and Adnan both leave Christie's house. They get Hayes Nissan from the park and ride. Maybe they aren't sure about how to get to Leakin Park, so Adnan gets the map book from the glove box in Hayes' car, leaving his palm print on it. At 6.59, Adnan calls his friend from the mosque, Yasser, telling him that he can't come to the mosque to lead prayers that night. Yasser relays this piece of news to the group. At 7 p.m., Jay pages Jen to pick him up later. Jen, on the other hand, has no idea what Jay is talking about. She calls him back at 7.09 p.m., pinging the tower near the burial site, which is Leakin Park. This is most likely the time when they bury Hay's body. Don gets home from work at 7 p.m. and gets a call from his manager 15 minutes later. He finally learns that Hay didn't show up for her shift. Jay pages Jen again. He pages her at 8.04 and 8.05 p.m. Records show that the phone is near the tower that covers the location where the Nissan was dumped. According to Jay and Jen's statements, this is the time when Jay asks Jen to pick him up at the Westview Mall. Around 8.45 p.m., Jay and Adnan most likely dump the shovels they use to bury Hay at Westview Mall. According to Jen's testimony, she arrives at the mall and sees Adnan with Jay. She and Jay leave Adnan. Jay tells her that Adnan strangled Hay. At 9.01 p.m., Adnan calls Nisha. Cell tower records show that the phone is near Adnan's home and the mosque. At this time, we can assume that Adnan has his car and his phone back. At 9.03 p.m., Adnan calls Krista. They talk for over five minutes, and then the call drops. Adnan calls Krista again at 9.10 p.m., and they talk for more than eight minutes. According to Krista's testimony, part of the conversation revolved around the ride that Hay was supposed to give him. At 9.57 p.m., Adnan calls Nisha again, and they talk for less than 30 seconds. According to Jen, Jay was afraid that his prints are on the shovels, so they went back to Westview to wipe them down. Afterwards, they stopped by Stephanie's house for a few minutes. Jay delivered his gift, gave her a hug, and wished her a happy birthday. Jen stayed in the car. According to Stephanie's statement, this happened between 10 and 11 p.m. Jay and Jen then head to Christy Vincent's house. According to Christy, they stay there for about 45 minutes. They acted weird the entire time before leaving. It's now the 14th of January. The police finally get to talk to Don at 1.30 a.m. about Hay. He hasn't talked to her since the evening of the 12th. There's no school that day because there's an ice storm. At 12.30 p.m., Jennifer picks up Jay and drives him to the F&M store. He discards the clothes he wore the night before at the dumpster there. At this point, none of Hay's friends think she's really missing. They're assuming that she spent time with Don, and that's why she didn't get to pick up her cousin at daycare. And since there's no power due to the ice storm, most people are preoccupied with their own thing. On the 15th, Krista's parents organize a birthday party for her. According to Krista, Hay was excited about it. But Adnan doesn't seem concerned when Hay didn't show up. He also does not tell Stephanie that Hay is missing. As the police continue searching for Hay, they start interviewing the people closest to her, which included Don and Adnan. Don tells the police that Hay was pretty happy the last time they talked. She mentioned arguing with her mother because she broke curfew, but she didn't seem like she would run away just because of this. A few days later, it was Adnan's turn to be interviewed. 
He tells the police that he didn't see Hay after class ended at 2.15 and that he stayed in school because he had track practice. He also mentions that he and Hay are still good friends. They broke up because of religious differences. He also tells the police that they never told their parents about the relationship because they would disapprove. This is not true. According to Hay's brother, they were aware that she was dating Adnan. Adnan had visited their mother's store more than once. Hay's mom even wanted to meet Adnan's parents. Moreover, Adnan's parents had already discovered their relationship. Adnan also tells the police that he had no idea that Hay had a new boyfriend. This is something that simply cannot be true. First, Hay posted her love for Don on her AOL profile. More importantly, he suggested to the police to ask Hay's boyfriend regarding her whereabouts when they first got in touch with him. The day after the interview, Adnan calls Jay several times. This is the first time he contacts Jay since the day of the murder. By that evening, Jay is arrested by the police for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest when he and Jen get pulled over. The day after Jay is arrested, Adnan calls Patrick at 4.44 p.m. This is the same Patrick that Jay called on the day of the murder, the guy who sold them marijuana. The call pings the tower that covers Leakin Park. Now, it's entirely possible that Adnan just wanted to buy weed as he drives by Hay's burial site because Jay doesn't want to have anything to do with him anymore. Or Adnan wants to ask Jay's friend why he was arrested and passes by Leakin Park because he wants to see if the police had discovered Hay's body. Five minutes after this call, he calls Patrick again. This time, the tower that gets pinged is the one that covers the area where the Nissan got dumped. They talk for 39 seconds. The next call that Adnan makes is to Jay's home at 5.17 p.m. By this time, Adnan should already be aware that Jay has gotten released from custody. The second call to Patrick may have been Adnan asking if it was safe to call Jay. For someone who isn't a close friend, Adnan spends a lot of time hanging out with Jay, lends him his car and brand new phone, and keeps calling him at home. What's even more interesting is that his good friend and ex-girlfriend Hay has been missing for more than a week, and he hasn't tried to call her at all. On February 1st, the detective in charge of the case reads the notes made on the initial investigation. He learns that Adnan asked for a ride from Hay. He calls Adnan to confirm this. Adnan denies it and says that he drove his own car to school. During the same conversation, the detective asks Adnan where he was after school. Adnan states that he was at practice. Directly after this conversation, the detective calls the assistant track coach to confirm this. However, there's no sign-in sheet to prove that Adnan was there that day. The detective tries to call Coach Sai, but he isn't able to connect with him. The detective also interviews other people in the school, including Hope Shab, a teacher at the school. Hay worked as her teacher's aide and attended her French class. She tells the detective about the homecoming incident. On the same day, someone calls the Crime Stoppers hotline and leaves an anonymous tip implicating Adnan. On February 2nd, Jay tells his friend Chris that Adnan killed Hay. During this time, there's a rumor that Hay ran away to stay with her mom's boyfriend in California, someone that Hay considers as her dad. The detective gets in touch with Mr. Sin, who states that he hasn't seen Hay since before she disappeared. On February 3rd, the detective pulls Adnan's driver's license. He is now considered a suspect. Shortly before Hay's body is found, her group of friends, including Becky and Adnan, look at pictures of Hay in Krista's room. While driving Becky home, Adnan tells her that Hay was still paging and calling him after the breakup. In addition, he tells her that Hay called him the night before she disappeared, asking him to get back together. He had rejected her and asked Becky if he had said something that caused Hay to do something or go somewhere. Call records and Hay's diary prove that these statements are lies. 
The press starts reporting Hay's disappearance. According to Adnan's brother, Tanvir, this is the first time they heard that Hay is missing. The detective tries to arrange a face-to-face -face interview with Adnan and his parents. Adnan didn't want to involve his parents because they disapproved of his relationship with Hay. He asked to have his brother come instead. After a few postponements, the interview is finally scheduled on February 10th. Hay's body is discovered on the 9th. Testimonies from friends and a school nurse show that Adnan keeps lying about Hay's feelings for him. After Hay's body is found, he tells different people that Hay was the one who wanted to get back together, that she loved him more than he loved her, and that he just wanted to be friends for the sake of his parents and his religion. He even tells Becky that this was God's plan for Hay to only live for 18 years. On February the 17th, the police receives Adnan's cell phone records. They use reverse directory to identify the phone numbers on Adnan's call log. Jennifer's home phone number is the first to be identified. Her number is also the one that pops up during the time frame that Hay went missing. The police subpoena the rest of the numbers. Over the next few days, the police interview Mr. Sellers and Don. They also ask Jen to come to the station for an interview. Jen states that she doesn't know why Adnan called her house that day. She says it might have been a friend who was at her house. She offers the phone numbers of some of their friends, including Jay and Stephanie. On February 27th, Jen comes back to the station with her attorney. That evening, Jay is picked up by the police. Stephanie calls Adnan at 1.30 a.m. to ask why the police are questioning Jay about Hay's murder. Adnan says he doesn't know. At 2.45 a.m., Jay leads the detectives to where Hay's Nissan is parked. The car is fingerprinted and processed. Adnan is arrested hours later. Motive, means, opportunity, the grand trifecta. Plus, he has holes in his alibi, but that's just the half of it. The second half of the question is, was this murder premeditated? We certainly think so. Adnan already felt murderous rage well before the 13th. He made sure that he could meet her alone that day by leaving his car with Jay. If Adnan just planned to meet Hay alone and get her back, then why did he need to leave his phone and car with Jay? Why didn't he leave his car in school or some parking lot? Having Jay at his beck and call was all part of the plan. He went to school that day knowing that if Hay didn't choose to come back to him, he would kill her, and Jay would help him bury the body. When did he start planning? Maybe sometime during the week, after he saw Hay's updated AOL profile. At the very least, Jay knew of the plan the day before. He may have believed it or not. He may have been just going along with Adnan, indulging him to help him vent his anger. But things got real. He got the call, and he went to Best Buy. Many say that Jay had been coached by the police to frame Adnan. If Jay had been a victim of a police frame job, he could have recanted his testimony when Serial came out. He could have confessed that his story was a lie. He could have cleared his name and even earned money selling his story. But he didn't. Jay admitted what he did wrong. He may have tried to minimize his involvement. We all do that. It's been more than 20 years since the murder and the conviction of Adnan Syed. He was released in 2022 and his life sentence vacated. The Supreme Court of Maryland reinstated his conviction because Hay's family was not given appropriate notice. However, it hasn't been decided yet whether Adnan will be put back in prison. While waiting for the Supreme Court's decision, Adnan has requested the Maryland Attorney General to investigate prosecutorial misconduct in his conviction. Now, we must admit that some parts of our most likely happened scenario can be considered as assumptions, but it's Occam's razor. The simplest explanation that fits the evidence is that Adnan planned to kill Hay if she didn't get back together with him. Since she said no, he proceeded with the plan and killed her sometime between 2.40 and 3.30 p.m. 
Then he got help establishing his planned alibi and dumping her body in Leakin Park. Let's hope that the courts will agree. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.